Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar and welcome to my channel Chemistry Tutorials. As you know, we've been doing a lot of videos on solid state and today it's the turn of part 4 of 10. In part 3, we talked about the shape cubic and we saw various arrangements in cubic. Remember, there are totally 7 shapes of unit cells and 4 arrangements maximum possible in any given shape. Now that gives rise to 28 possibilities. And then at the end of part 3 video, we talked about Brevis lattices. Those are 14 unit cells that actually exist of the 28 that are possible. So we need to find out what happened to the other 14 and why did we pick up these 14 and not those 14. Now actually what happens is the missing 14 happen to be some of the existing 14 themselves. And therefore, we picked up certain 14 and left out the other, which is exactly what we need to find out. For example, in cubic shape, we only saw three arrangements. We saw primitive, we saw body centered and we saw face centered. We did not see end centered. So we also need to find out why did we not pick up end centered cubic? That's because end centered happens to be one of the other 14, the ones that exist. So we didn't pick up n centered cubic. But at the same time, we need to know why did we not take n centered cubic and why did we take something else in place of that. So this particular video is about the curious case of the missing lattices. So let's try and understand what is the reason why did we choose particular 14 and not the other. So the question comes down to this. Choosing a unit cell, if more than one type exists, depends on two factors. The first and the most important factor is symmetry. This is what we are going to check first. And then we are going to check the size. Remember, size is not as important as symmetry. Symmetry comes first, size comes next. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you have an arrangement of atoms or ions or molecules. And somehow you are able to find two unit cells in this. Now you don't jump and say, okay, let's go for the smallest repeating unit. Even though when we were discussing unit cells, we did say the smallest repeating unit. But please understand, as we go further and further, we're going to go deeper and deeper into the selection of unit cells. So unit cells are not simply the smallest ones. We need to look at symmetry first and then the size. So symmetry is the prime and the most important thing. And then we look at the size. So if we find two different unit cell in a given arrangement of atoms, then which one do we select? Let's say for example, the two possible unit cells have one has shape A, whatever be this, those seven shapes and the lattice type is X. Lattice type means the arrangement, the four arrangements, primitive, body centered, face centered and end centered. And A is one of those seven shapes that we talked about. And let us say the other possibility is shape B with a lattice type Y. The arrangement is Y. Now, how do we pick this up? Now, what we need to understand is we need to understand the symmetry first before we understand how we pick up something based on symmetry. So, let's now discuss symmetry elements. Now, a symmetry operation is an action that leaves an object looking the same after it has been carried out. A symmetry operation is an action that leaves an object looking the same after it has been carried out. For example, if you take a molecule of water and rotate it by 180 degree about an axis passing through the central O, that is between the two hydrogen atoms, it will look the same as before. So that is what we need to understand. Now, there are various symmetry elements that exist. The first is called axis of symmetry. Now, axis of symmetry is an imaginary line passing through an object about which if we rotate the object by an angle less than 360 degrees, we should get an object indistinguishable from the original object. So, look at this one. If this is water, this is oxygen, these are the two hydrogens. Now what would happen if I rotate the water molecule about this axis? Rotate it, flip it horizontally. 
Don't you think this H is going to land up here? And this H is going to land up here? And the O will remain as it is. And can you see this water molecule is indistinguishable from the earlier one? So this particular line is called axis of symmetry. And since we rotated it by 180 degree, we call it C2 axis. C2 because this value is 360 by N and this is the angle by which you rotate. So this is a 180 degree angle of rotation. N is 2, we write C2. So CN is 360 by N angle of rotation. So this is a C2 axis of symmetry. Now remember, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth into symmetry elements, but we need to understand some elementary idea about what these are. The next thing that we need to talk about is called a plane of symmetry. Now a plane of symmetry is a plane that would cut an object into two identical halves. So now let's look at water molecule. It has got two planes of symmetry. Can you see there is one plane, this one, if I cut the water molecule right in between the oxygen, then I get half of oxygen on one side with hydrogen and other half of oxygen and hydrogen on the other side, which are identical. Or for that matter, I could cut it in the plane of the molecule. Remember, water is a planar molecule. They are all, there are only three atoms and any three atoms can be in the same plane. So if I cut the molecule where I'm going to cut O into half and the two hydrogens into half, even that is a plane of symmetry. So we call it a plane of symmetry. The next is called a center of symmetry and this is pretty interesting. Center of symmetry is an imaginary point in the object such that if a line is drawn from any part of element in the molecule passing through this point and extended equidistant on the other side encounters an equal part or element. And this should happen from all parts of elements in the molecule. Let me give an example. Say for example, look at this molecule. Now where is the center of the molecule? The center of the molecule is right here. Now can you see that from this point, if I draw a straight line up to the center of the molecule, extended equidistant on the other side, I get the same type of atom. Now go from the blue, I go from here, go up to here, extended equidistant on the other side, don't I get another blue atom? So this point is called center of symmetry and this should happen from all parts of the molecule. And the last symmetry element that we need to talk about is called an alternate axis of symmetry. Now here what happens is you rotate a molecule by an angle less than 360 about an axis and then take a plane perpendicular to the axis and again do the reflection. So that would be called an alternate axis of symmetry. It is the rotation by an angle less than 360 around an axis and subsequent reflection on a plane perpendicular to the rotation axis. The molecule shown above has the alternate axis of symmetry. So this has alternate axis of symmetry. Let me show you how. What happens is, what would happen if I were to rotate it by, let's say around this axis. Let's say I rotate it around this axis. What will happen? What will happen is that here you will get blue and here you will get red. Here you will get red. Here you will get blue. I flip it around this axis. Now what I do, I take a plane here, which is perpendicular to the axis. And now assume that it reflects. That means everything on top goes down, everything on the bottom goes up. So the red goes on top, blue goes at the bottom. Here the blue goes on top, red goes down. And can you see it becomes the same molecule as it was? This is an alternative axis of symmetry. Let me show you this. Let me flip this first. Let me rotate it about this axis. So I'm rotating it about this axis. Now I'm flipping it perpendicular to the plane and you see the same molecule again. And that is the alternate axis of symmetry. So these are some of the symmetry elements that a molecule will possess. Now this is what Brevise did. 
when he selected 14 unit cells out of the 28, this is what he did. What he did was, he went ahead and catalogued all the symmetry elements of the seven shapes. He looked at all the axis of symmetry a shape has. He looked at all the plane of symmetry a shape has. He looked at all the center of symmetry. In fact, there can be only one center of symmetry. And then he also looked at the various alternative axis of symmetry each shape has. That must have taken pretty long time. But he catalogued each symmetry element. Now what he did, he placed each arrangement, primitive, body-centered, face-centered, end-centered in each shape and performed all the symmetry operations of that shape. Now, if any arrangement violates even one symmetry element of that shape, he rejected that particular arrangement from that shape. So now let me give you an example. Let's take a cube and let's only take three axes of symmetry. Now, these are 90 degree axis symmetry. If you rotate a cube ar around this axis by 90 degree, can you see you'll get the same cube back? The same is true for this axis of symmetry also. The same is true for this axis of symmetry also. So there are three axes of symmetry of 90 degree which are coming through opposite phases. Of course, there are many axes of symmetry. I'm only looking at these three now. Now let me place primitive cubic. Let's keep atoms here. Only at the corners. Now let's perform the three operations, symmetry operations. Let's rotate by 90 degree through each of these axes. Don't you think in each case, the molecule that you'll get will be indistinguishable from the previous one? So that means primitives are allowed to exist in a cube. Now let's go for a body-centered cubic. Can you again see if you perform these three operations, you will get a cube which is indistinguishable from the previous one. Then what he did, he kept face centered. So let's keep a face centered. Can you again notice that if I rotate the cube by 90 degree through each of these axes, I'll get the same face centered as it was originally present. But then, now look at what happens when you deal with end-centered. In end-centered, you have the centering only on two opposite phases. That's called end-centered. So centering is on only two opposite phases. Now can you see that as long as this axis is concerned, rotate by 90, the cube looks the same way. But if you rotate by this axis, or this axis for that matter, by 90 degrees, don't you think the centering here would come either here or somewhere here, depending upon the direction of rotation? So can you see, you will not get the same end centered as it looked before the rotation. Of course, you can do 90 degree rotation about these. But remember, for a cube, they are defined for 90 degrees. I mean, you can do 180, sorry. You can do 180 around these. You'll get the same thing back, but you will not get it for 90. And for a cube, it is only defined for 90. Therefore, what happens is end-centered cubic violates, in fact, end-centered unit cell violates the symmetry elements of a cube. So, end-centered is not chosen in a cube as it violates the symmetry elements of a cube. So now let's get back to our original example, shape A and lattice x shape b lattice y now what he did was first of all he checked whether x can exist in a and y can exist in b case number one this does not exist suppose x does not exist in a just like n centered does not exist in a cube it violates the symmetry element. Then he automatically chose this and coincidentally also found that whenever such a situation happened, Y was always working with B. Y was not violating any symmetry element of B. So this is how he chose one unit cell over the other. 
Now let's take another situation. Shape is A. Lattice is X. Shape is B. Lattice is Y. And both of them exist. X can exist in A. Y can exist in B. Then he looked at the shape of A and B. The one which possesses maximum symmetry elements is chosen. So if shape A has let's say 20 symmetry elements, shape B has 18, he chose this. But now the third case comes that shape A lattice X shape B lattice Y both exist and the number of symmetry elements of shape A and shape B by coincidence are the same. Then he went for that which was smaller in size. So size comes up when eventually symmetry is not able to decide. So both exist and both of same number of symmetry elements shape A and shape B. Then he chose the one which was smaller in size. So that is how lattice points, that is how lattices are decided. So right now I'm going to give you some examples of the missing unit cells and what are the equivalent to. I'm not going to show it for all of the missing ones, but I'm just going to give you a few examples. And then later on, of course, I'll give you a table in which everything will be there. N-centered cubic looks like this. If N-centered were to exist in a cube, it would look like this. But then, let's draw another unit cell. N-centered cubic. Now let's draw one more unit cell and create another N-centered cubic. Now, since N-centered cubic doesn't exist, there's an alternative unit cell here. Look at this. Can you guess the shape of this? A equal to B not equal to C and all angles are 90. Can you guess the shape? It is tetragonal. And where are the atoms located? Only at the corners. So N-centered cubic was rejected and tetragonal primitive was selected. So N-centered cubic is same as tetragonal primitive. So we reject n-centered cubic and select tetragonal primitive. Now let's check out one more. Cubic is obviously not chosen because n-centered violates cubic uh, symmetry elements. Let's check one more. n-centered tetragonal. So I have an n-centered tetragonal here. A equal to B, not equal to C, all angles are 90. Tetragonal. And I create one more unit cell like that. And I place the atoms here. All corners and the center of any two opposite phases. That is N-centered. Defined as. And centering at two phases. Opposite. Now this is N-centered tetragonal. And it doesn't exist. Do you know why? Because N-centered tetragonal is actually primitive tetragonal. Look at this. Even this is a unit cell. Now, N-centered tetragonal does not violate the symmetry element of tetragonal. So, N-centered tetragonal and primitive tetragonal both do not violate the symmetry element of tetragonal. Both exist. And both being tetragonal have the same number of symmetry elements. So, symmetry is not able to decide Therefore, what decides? The size. This is smaller. So, N-centered tetragonal is primitive tetragonal. Similarly, let's look at face-centered tetragonal. This is face-centered tetragonal. As you can see, the atoms at all corners are going to come up. And you're going to see the atoms at the center of every phase because it is phase centered now. 
back face back face right face front face and the middle face can you notice something look at this what would you call this now remember it's not primitive because this guy is right in the middle it's body center tetrahedral and it is smaller in size again the size is deciding here body center tetrahedral so this is equal to body center tetrahedral because it is smaller similarly let's look at another one body centered monoclinic and now let me quickly swift through all the examples uh, of course i'm not going to show all of them i'm going to show you only some of them and uh, let me just show you this this is body centered monoclinic and body centered monoclinic becomes what do you call this forget this line forget this line what do you call this it is end centered monoclinic smaller in size face centered monoclinic is this now let's look at this what does it look like of course we need to have this is also end centered monoclinic it appears as primitive monoclinic but i'm sorry it is end centered so you can cut this out this is end centered smaller in size so let's go ahead and let's do body center triclinic and this is body center triclinic and uh, now the shapes are going to get weirder and weirder it becomes even more difficult to understand what is this i'm sure you can guess this this is primitive triclinic end center triclinic doesn't exist because this is end center triclinic and it becomes primitive triclinic because of smaller size so many of them are actually being decided by size except of course for end center cubic which was not so then it is primitive triclinic similarly face centered triclinic looks like this and this is also primitive triclinic triclinic with the worst possible shape no sides equal no angles equal none of them 90 end centered hexagonal why doesn't it exist well this is end centered hexagonal and that is because of this this is end centered monoclinic so i'm going to do this fast so now let's see the final list which ones are missing and what are they equivalent to the missing lattices crystal systems missing lattices and equivalent lattice first is cubic missing is n centered and that we said is primitive tetragonal missing is rhombohedral and these are what they are equivalent to face centered rhombohedral is primitive triclinic and so on and so forth so i'm not going to um, read these out i'm sure you can see it for yourself and uh, you can pause the video once this table is over and maybe take down the list of that these are the missing lattices and when i say any centered i'm talking about body centered face centered and n centered and uh, well this is what is the case now you will notice one a peculiar thing let's count the missing lattices how many these are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and this is 3 because it is any centered body centered face centered and n centered so 3 so how many did we have 12 14 14 are missing but of the equivalent lattice how many are unique just check this out primitive tetragonal 1 2 3 4 
फाइव सिक्स सेवन वाई ओनली सेवन बिकॉज रेस्ट आर रिपीट यू सी प्रिमेटिव टेटेक्नल वी ऑलरेडी डन अगेन दस ए प्रिमेटिव टेटेक्नल सो आई एम जस्ट लुकिंग एट दू यूनिक वंस सो आर एंड फोर्टीन सपोज टू एग्जिस्ट वेल यू सी यू फुकॉट समथिंग इन क्यूबिक शेप देर आर थ्री यूनिट सेल्स प्रिमेटिव बॉडी सेंटर्ड एंड फेस सेंटर्ड दे आर नॉट लिस्टेड हियर सो हाउ मेनी आर लिस्टेड हियर वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन आर लिस्टेड हियर तो सेवन प्लस थ्री फ्रॉम क्यूबिक प्लस ना ऑर्थोरॉम्बिक डू रिमेंबर ऑर्थोरॉम्बिक ऑर्थोरॉम्बिक हैज फोर If you remember, orthorhombic has four, and of the orthorhombic, I've only listed primitive. So three more from orthorhombic. How much that make it? Thirteen. Okay. So there is one more guy missing. So who's that guy? Let's figure that out. Um, hexagonal. Look at hexagonal. Do you find any hexagonal shape here? no and there is hexagonal primitive it has one more that's 14 so basically these are the missing lattices and these are the lattices they are equivalent to so that is the end of this particular video and uh, i hope you understood this video and uh, just go back and watch it as many times as you want pause it whenever you want to have a look at it carefully because these are pretty essential things and uh, please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because when you subscribe when the number of subscribers increase i get more rights in youtube that helps me make more and more videos like this videos on chemistry tutorials and they are pretty important and if you have any comments suggestions observations queries doubts please drop them in the comment section below and I would like to thank you for watching this video. Have a great day and have a great week. Thank you for watching and do like the video too.